Hi, I'm Jim Kessler from the K-8 Science Office in the Education Division at the American Chemical Society. This video is an introduction to show how the lessons in middleschoolchemistry.com align with the Next Generation Science Standards, or the NGSS. To do that, let's first look at the standards. So the structure of the NGSS can be kind of scary and confusing. We included two links below this video so you could download the two sets of standards for chemistry for middle school. They are structure and properties of matter and chemical reactions. So let's take just a couple of minutes to explain what the boxes at the bottom here have to do with the standards at the top. The NGSS are built on three components, which they call dimensions. They're disciplinary core ideas here in the orange box, science and engineering practices in the blue box, and cross-cutting concepts in the green. Basically, a shorthand way of looking at it is that the disciplinary core ideas are like the science concepts that students need to know. Matter is composed of atoms or molecules, something like that. The science and engineering practices are what students need to be able to do, like develop a model, plan and conduct an experiment, something like that. And the cross-cutting concepts are sort of, they're like big ideas that students need to be able to recognize as applying across disciplines, like cause and effect or structure and function. So a particular standard is made up of elements from these three foundation boxes. They're integrated to become the standard. But we'll have more about that in a minute. But first, let's take a look at where all this information in the foundation boxes comes from. So the text in the foundation boxes comes from a 380-page report called A Framework for K-12 Science Education, Practices, Cross-Cutting Concepts, and Core Ideas. Now that report was published in 2012 by the National Research Council of the National Academy of Sciences. Everything in the NGSS, including all the appendices, A through M, of the standards grow out of the framework. So the question is, how did the framework become the standards? So the framework itself directed that the standards be written as learning goals or performance expectations that integrate elements from each of the dimensions, the disciplinary core ideas, the science and engineering practices, and the cross-cutting concepts. Here's an example. Take a look at MSPS 1.4. Develop a model that predicts and describes changes in particle motion, temperature, and state of a pure substance when thermal energy is added or removed. Now, how did the writers come up with that? Well, you can tell by going back down to the foundation boxes and looking for references to MSPS 1.4. Like, here's one. Gases and liquids are made of molecules or inert atoms. Take a look at science and engineering practices. Here's MSPS 1.4 develop a model to predict and describe phenomena. Or for cross-cutting concepts, MSPS 1.4 is right here, cause and effect relationships. So the standards writers used elements from each of the foundation boxes to create the performance expectation, which is the standard. One thing about the cross-cutting concepts is that they're usually not as explicit as the disciplinary core idea and the science and engineering practice, but cause and effect is in there. If you read the standard, it's about that the particle motion will be affected by adding or removing energy. So cause and effect is there, even though the words cause and effect aren't there. Also, you need to remember that the standards are performance expectations for students. They're standards for assessment. So if you look at these uh, clarification statements in red, what these are are like examples of what you would see from a student to show that they have achieved the, the performance expectation. For example, it says examples of models could include drawings or diagrams. That's what you'd see from a student. Or examples of particles could include molecules or inert atoms. Uh, that's also something that a student would show that they have achieved this performance expectation. So here they are. These are all the performance expectations for chemistry in middle school. These are what students need to know and be able to do by the end of eighth grade in chemistry-related physical science. But the question for teachers is, how do you get students to be able to perform the performance expectations? What do you actually teach? What should students be doing? Should you use each performance expectation as a lesson that you could teach? So the performance expectations become the curriculum? Well, the answer is no. The front matter in the standards makes it clear that the standards are learning goals for students and not teaching strategies for teachers. It says the NGSS are standards or goals that reflect what a student should know and be able to do. They do not dictate the manner or methods by which the standards are taught. 
You know, performance expectations, like any assessment standards, can be helpful as a guide to envision what type of lesson you might use to help students achieve the standard, but the standards themselves are not the lessons. So is there more guidance for what lessons and units should look like? Well, the answer is yes, and the guidance comes from the framework. It says that students cannot fully understand scientific ideas without engaging in science practices, and students cannot learn or show competence in practices except in the context of specific science content. So the bottom line is that you should use practices. Students learn both the core ideas and the practice better if they actually engage in science practices in order to learn the core ideas. But what do they mean by practices? What should the practices look like? So science practices are about phenomena. The framework talks about practices in terms of phenomena. For instance, developing and using models. That's a, a very common practice in the standards. It says that science often involves the construction and use of a wide variety of models and simulations to help develop explanations about natural phenomena. That's why you do this practice. Or constructing explanations. The goal for students is to construct logically coherent explanations of phenomena. So this idea is that a practice is about phenomena. For instance, like why does a candle burn? Or why does water beat up? Or why does water dissolve some substances and not others? So what kinds of lessons have students interact with and explain phenomena? So lessons that involve phenomena are investigations. There's a section on middle school structural and properties of matter in the framework that makes this clear. It says things like, in this grade band, meaning grades six to eight, investigations are designed to enhance students' ability to create explicit models and to use them for developing explanations of observations. So these observations are the phenomena that they are observing. Or across grades six to eight, investigations of matter continue to become more precise and students' understanding of the particle model of matter continues to be refined. Again, it's investigations and observations of phenomena. That's what lessons should look like. And the lessons in middleschoolchemistry.com very closely follow this direction from the framework. There's also more guidance in a document called the EQUIP rubric. It stands for Educators Evaluating the Quality of Instructional Practices. You can find it online. It's not in the standards or in the framework. But it's a more detailed approach for evaluating curriculum with respect to the NGSS. It's got three categories, alignment to the NGSS, instructional supports, and monitoring student progress. We're not going to look at the EQUIP rubric in a lot of detail, but even a quick look at it will show you that it's all about students investigating phenomena. It's about lessons working together so students can understand and model phenomena and be able to explain it. And under monitoring student progress, there's a lot about a formative assessment and summative assessment. If you look at the rubric, you would see that the lessons and units in middleschoolchemistry.com meet the vast majority of the criteria in the equip rubric. So how do the lessons and chapters in middleschoolchemistry.com align to the standards? Well, in the lessons in middleschoolchemistry.com, students interact with and investigate common phenomena. With the teacher's help, they develop models of matter on the molecular level, and then students use those models to help explain their observations and to make predictions for new situations. So the bottom line is that students use science practices to investigate phenomena in order to understand and explain core ideas and recognize cross-cutting concepts. So let's take a look at a sample alignment for a lesson in middleschoolchemistry.com. So on the NGSS landing page, there are links to the NGSS alignment for each lesson. Now we're not saying that a single lesson addresses an entire performance expectation, but a lesson addresses elements of the performance expectation. And taken together, the lessons in a chapter or a series of lessons work together to achieve the performance expectation. So let's take a look at one. So here's the NGSS alignment for chapter one, lesson one, Molecules Matter. So at the top, we wrote the performance expectation. In this case, it's the one we looked at before, MSPS 1.4. And below it, you'll see that we have the disciplinary core ideas, science and engineering practices, and cross-cutting concepts that were referenced in the foundation boxes for this performance expectation. And then in each section, we have in italics how the lesson addresses these elements of the performance expectation. 
So taken together, you can get a good idea of how each lesson in middleschoolchemistry.com addresses the performance expectation that it's written for. Well, we hope this introduction was helpful. And just to let you know, we're going to be conducting a series of webinars on how the lessons in middleschoolchemistry.com address the individual performance expectations in the NGSS for middle school chemistry.